I haven't met anybody yet who can make the saxophone sing like Mr. Lonnie Youngblood. We thank God for his ministry, and we thank God that every year he is here to help us celebrate our seniors. We thank God for him. Amen. Elmwood, there is a preacher in the house. Now, I am excited about all of the guest preachers that we extend an invitation to, um, but I am especially especially excited about this preacher because this isn't just any preacher. The Reverend Dr. Fernanda Hughes has mentored me in the ministry. I met him, I must have been about 18 years old on the campus of Drew University and at the time I was still discerning my call. Didn't quite know what I wanted to do. I had left the Pentecostal church and I ran into Reverend Hughes, and he said, come and check out what we're doing at Bethel. Now, at the time, I had already joined Calvary, and I was like, all right, let me, let me see what, what's going on. The, 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 having the option of being able to serve in the community where I grew up was appealing to me. I remember going to Bethel, and I liked what I saw. But more importantly, Reverend Hughes could see the call that God had placed on my life. He nurtured that call. He took me under his wing. He let this preacher practice preaching in his pulpit. I should go back and get my money, give, give some money back to Bethel because those first couple of sermons were a little rough. But he kept giving me opportunities. Not only did he embrace me, but his entire family embraced me. His wife would cook meals for me. I was a broke college student, y'all, but his wife would cook for me. I became like a big sister to his daughter, Devondra. He, along with the Bethel family, nurtured my faith when I was still trying to figure out who I was going to be. He literally helped to cultivate my preaching voice. And so if you have ever been blessed by anything that I have said from this pulpit, it is because he poured into me, gave me space to practice this craft, gave me advice, nurtured me. So if you've been blessed by anything that I've said, you owe this man some gratitude. Amen. I'm so excited that he came up from North Carolina to be with us in person here today. And so Elmwood, will you help me welcome to the Elmwood pulpit, my mentor, my friend, my father in the ministry, the Reverend Dr. Vernander L. Hughes. Will you help me welcome him? And all the people said amen. I stand humbled so stand here grateful for this opportunity to share with you on today. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Certainly, we have so much to thank God for. To your pastor, Pastor Maria Morales Crumpton. She is somebody's preacher. She is your pastor. 
she continues to do a phenomenal work and for that we are grateful I am that's it give it up give it up give it up for her give it up. I am grateful for how she continues to invest in the kingdom of God. She has made me proud. She is one who is determined and she gives it her best. And whatever she does, she gives it her best. She doesn't try to come half-stepping. She gives it her best. for the Jeremiah 3.15 said I will give you pastors according to my heart that's what God said I will give you pastors according to my heart and God has given you this pastor according to his heart it just shows how much God loves you in the person and through the person of Pastor Crump we love her, we love her family, and I think it was about 07 when her and Andre got married, I think July of 07, and, and there are you know, additions to the family, amen, that Nala, AJ, and Noah, I have not had the opportunity to meet Noah yet, but I will today after service, and have a wonderful family. Andre is a great guy. Amen. We praise God for you. Amen, Andre. Maria knows how to go for the best. <laughs> and she chose Andre. Amen. Amen. I have my beautiful wife with me today. Who's here. Stand up, Sandra. My wife of, of 31 years. 31 years, amen. Uh, 31 years, December the 8th, and I praise God for her. Uh, she is my support, amen. And my beautiful wife. I'm just glad to be in the number one more time. It's, it's a beautiful spirit in this, in this place. It's a beautiful spirit. And the Bible said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty feel free and and I'm just glad to be a part of the seniors day amen recognizing all the seniors acknowledging all the seniors because uh, I know for myself I appreciate seniors amen I appreciate you I, I love you and we just uh, just so grateful for all of the sacrifice and commitments that you have made Amen. We're grateful. The senior choir. Come on, let's give it up for the senior choir. This music ministry. God bless you. I love how you minister to us. And then, Brother Youngblood. Amen. You minister to, to us through the saxophone. And I am truly blessed. Amen. Well, let's get to work. Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. It's in the book of Exodus chapter 2. I invite your attention to the book of Exodus chapter 2. And if it's your custom to stand for the reading of God's word, I ask that you would stand in reverence uh, to his holy word. I'm going to read Exodus chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. From the NIV translation, beginning at verse 1 in Exodus chapter 2, these words are recorded. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a fine child. She hid him for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a, a papyrus basket, a papyrus basket for him and 
coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and she and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take the baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Our focus verse, when the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify your holy name. We ask, God, that you would overshadow me, that there will be none of me but all of you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. My strength and my redeemer is in Jesus' name that I pray. And the people of God said amen. Amen. You may take your seat. Amen. On the senior Sunday, I want to share with you from the subject as we have all come together, and as we have come to share in this moment the withdrawal of a valuable deposit. The withdrawal of a valuable deposit. My brothers and my sisters, wherever we are in the existence of life, it is not a journey of isolation. Really, this or these insightful words are the thoughts of this one who spoke these words. And what really was being said is that wherever we are in life, we did not get there by ourselves. You didn't get to where you are on your own. You, you had some help along the way because truth of the matter is uh, you didn't get there on your own. There were help. There was help along the way on the journey to get you to that place. And I realize there have been some challenges. I realize uh, that there have been some moments that seem to contradict all of what you were striving for. You, you were striving for your best. You were striving for, but there were contradictions that came. However, in those contradictory moments, there was some help that got you to where you are. And I often say to these young people that wherever you are, it was because of some sacrifices that were made for you to, to get to where you are today. You didn't just arrive. You didn't get there just because you were so intelligent. You didn't get there because of so much of the social connection. There, there, there really was some help along the way to get you to that place. And so even in those moments, in those moments of being helped to get to where you have been destined to go, the reality is, is that there is possibilities within all of us. 
And, and that possibility within us has been nurtured. That, that, that possibility within us have been in some contradictory moments. And in those contradictory moments, it is where the contradictory moment pulls out of us the possibility of getting to the place where we are today and where we are heading. Do I have a witness here? Anybody just can testify and say, yes, uh, I, I have some possibilities within me. I have some greatness in me. And there were some contradictory moments uh, that really caused me and helped me to get there with some, the assistance from others uh, who got me there, those who stood by my side, those who encouraged me, those who gave me a word. It is the moment where contradictory times brings out the best within you. Really, 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 because when we look at these contradictory moments, and, 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 and have all of the possibilities within us and these contradictory moments uh, that brings out the possibility within us, we do know that regardless of the moment or the experience, there is nothing that can uh, deny or really dismantle the possibility within you because how many of you know that contradictory moments uh, is no match against the possibility within you. Oh, I said something there. Because there is the possibility within you. And so the contradictory moment is what gets you to the place where you are. But thank God for those who stood by our side. Thank God for those who were right there to encourage us to keep going and to keep moving and to let us know that, baby, you can make it. Yeah, 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 we, we can make it, those contradictory moments. And so when we look at this text, when we look at this text, this text really is a contradictory moment. It's, 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 it's really a, a moment that gives a fragment of the picture. It doesn't really give the, the total picture because we are in chapter 2. It's, it's, the, it's a contradictory moment, but, but it's a fragment of the picture when we consider it into the life or consider it with the life of Moses. It, it's just a fragment of, of the picture here. And so we, we see here the contradiction that, that Moses experienced in his life, but, but we also see that, that Moses is, is heading somewhere, but he doesn't get there on his own. He, he doesn't get there by himself. He has some help along the way. So, so Moses, in, in this text, we, we, we see where, where these are times of tension. These, these are times where, where the tension was high because in the text, it suggests to us or really tells us about uh, these two people coming together and they are married. They have, a ch they have children. They have a child that is born. They, they are no doubt are expecting to live this happy life and, and not to deal with the tension that they are exposed to, uh, and yet they are to live this happy life uh, with no challenges uh, and just live life to the fullest. But we see here that they are in tensions, a time where tension is high because uh, it is where Pharaoh say kill every male child. Can you imagine in their mind, in your mind, uh, as to no doubt how this couple felt? They, they just got married, and she becomes pregnant, and, and, and so she have to deal with uh, the tension of giving birth to a child into a world uh, that, that, that is set up to kill and destroy. Can you imagine how pressing it is upon her mind? This, this, this young couple, this couple, they, they get married, and so they, they, they plan to have this life, but there's tension. There is a political tension that is set because Pharaoh said, kill every male child. And she has to live. They have to live with 
this tension. They, they're in the midst of this tension. They're in the midst of this tension, this political tension. That's really the tension in this text because the tension in the text, uh, as we see, is this political tension up against possibility. And I did share with you that, that contrary moments uh, is no match uh, against possibility because no matter what may be the contrary moment, I tell you, possibility cannot be dismantled. Somebody has some possibility within you and you're looking at what you're going through. You're looking at what you're dealing with and you see all the hell that you're dealing with and facing it all around you. But how many know God is able? I say God is able to bring you out. Here, here, here is this contradictory moment because Moses is born in tense time. But look, 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 look how, look how things are set up. This, 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 this is set up. This, this really a tense time because Moses, Moses is born. And when the, he, is, he is born, his mother sees him and say how fine he looked. He was a fine child. He was a good looking child. I, I, I wondered. I wondered how this fit in, but 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 as I began to focus on this in terms of uh, Moses being this good-looking child, uh, I, I just believe uh, that this mother saw something uh, beyond uh, that was beyond his skin, uh, that was beyond his countenance. Uh, uh, here, this mother saw the possibility within this child, and so she hid him until she could hide him no longer she, she 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 was had planned for this baby and yet she's in tense time and in these tense times she is protecting her baby by holding on to because she does not want his life to be destroyed she is holding on, and she held on until she could hold on no longer. That, that, that's, that's, really, that's, that's really love. That's really love, holding on, because she didn't want anything. Just like any parent, loving parent, they don't want uh, any harm to come upon their child. And so she holds on to him until she could hold on no longer. That's love. But I don't want you to get this twisted because uh, she releases her child. Because we have to understand something in the text. Uh, love is not restricted to the choice of just holding on. But it's also the will to release. No, 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 love is not just holding. Love sometimes calls for you to release the things that you love and hold on so dear. Well, it was Scott Peck, that Christian psychologist, uh, who said love is the will to extend oneself for the purpose of loving one to nurture them in order that they can become all that they can be. That, that, that's love. It's, it's the will to extend oneself. In other words, love is action. Love is a choice. And so, so we see here this, this love that this mother demonstrates. She demonstrates this love by not just holding on to him, but releasing him. Look at this mother. No doubt, no doubt she had in her mind to have the best for a child. But she comes to a place in her life where her choice she made caused her to make the choice that was best for the bigger picture. Because keep in mind... This is a fragment of the picture. This is a fragment of the moment. It's not showing or revealing the bigger picture because we are just in chapter 2. I'd come to let you know, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're dealing with. Whatever you're facing, it's a fragment and some choices, some decisions that have been made, I tell you, is leading you to somewhere greater because God has something greater for you. Yeah, he, he has something greater. He has, has something greater because she had to release him. She, she had to release him. The moment had come to a place where she had to release him. 
she releases him into the place of his destiny. She was setting him up. You see the vital role that this mother plays in the life of the child? Moses is now being placed where God is leading him. It is where she had to release him. Can I just tell you, can I just suggest to you that there are some things that you may have to release. There are some people you just may have to release in your life. You think you are protecting them, but it may just be where you are holding them up from the place or the path God has set for them. And I realize, I realize, I realize, I realize that. Now, now it was said, it was said, it was decreed that, that every male child would be thrown in the Nile River to be destroyed. And here this mother is up against uh, this tough decision, this, this tough choice of releasing her child into the now, into some risky places, into a dangerous place. Here she releases him. But the release is for a bigger picture. You, you, you ain't seen it all yet. I used to wonder why my mother and father divorced when I was young. I used to wonder about that question. I used to question it as far as why I had to grow up in a home where everybody else had their daddy and I didn't in the home. But, but as I got older and as I began to reflect, I thank God because there was a release in the experience. Because maybe if things would have happened other than how it turned out to be, then I wonder where would I be today? A contradictory moment seemed to go against the possibility, seemed to have gotten to a place where possibility was no longer possible. But God has a way of working things out. So don't get caught up in the fragment of the moment. Don't, don't get caught up in chapter 2 because there are other chapters. There, there are 38 chapters more. God has a bigger plan for your life. Can anybody just go ahead and give God some praise and tell him thank you? Yes, I may be in chapter 2, but there are 38 more chapters. God got it all in his hands. Release, release. She releases him. She releases him. But look like when she released him, when she released him, because that's how we really deals with, deal with uh, the, the contradictory moment in life, it, it comes a time where we have to release. But not only we release, we, we see here, we see in the text that, that this mother releases her child and put him in the now. She prepared everything that was needed in order for him to get to where he, wherever he would land and be. And so uh, she, she releases him. And, 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 and Moses' sister, Marion, who was really three years older than Moses, she, 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 she's there in the, in the water. She is there in the water. She is positioned. And so as she is positioned, she is positioned watching and overseeing the well-being of her brother. He has been released. He's put on the path where God has set up for him. Here, here, here it is. He, 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 he's released. He's released. But, but look as he's released. As he is released and, and, and heading to where he's going. We, we notice something. We notice something here because it is where Moses is put in the water and he's, at the, he's on the edge of the banks of, of, of the Nile as he's floating down the Nile. And, and Pharaoh's daughter and her slave come for Pharaoh's daughter to bathe. There is, notice, 
Moses' sister, standing from a far distance. Here he is, Moses floating down the Nile. There is Pharaoh, daughter coming to bathe. And so they all meet there at a spotted time. I believe it was set up because how many know God's timing is the intersection of perfection in the making? Oh, yeah. They get there at the same time. And don't you get this thing twisted thinking that when you are a child of God that you deal with luck and chance. No, this was not by accident. This was not by chance. It was the divine hand of God moving in the fragment of the moment. God is working behind the scene in the fragment of the moment. God, God set it up. God has set this thing up. We see God setting this thing up. It is where God is working that thing out. And as we reach across the center of times, and here Paul say, and we know that all things work together for the good of them who love God and call according to his purpose. This was God setting this up. Gus, this was God working this thing out, making it happen because God got it all in his hand. Do I have a witness in here? Is there anybody who can just testify and say, yes, God got it all in his hand. God was working that thing out because when you look back over your life and see how God has made a way for you and how God has blessed you and some of the things you've been through, how God put those things together, work that thing out. Somebody say, yeah, and thank God for his grace and his mercy. It's really, really, it's really God working, God working behind the scene. I say he's working behind the scene. He does that. So don't ever get the idea of thinking that God has forsaken you because you can't see God or can't trace God. God is still working behind the scene. God is working that thing out because when you look at this, you look at Moses' life, you would have think, you would have thought that maybe he would have been destroyed, but God was keeping him in the midst of the situation. Moses had a purpose on his life. Yeah, there was a purpose on Moses' life. But as this purpose that Moses has, he is released into some dangerous and risky places. The reason why you are in some places and experiencing some of the things that you are experiencing right now, going through what you're going through, you, you wonder why everybody's talking about you. You wonder why you're going through and dealing with some of the things you deal with in your life. But don't you know you got a purpose on your life? When you got a purpose on your life, there are some places you are in, some risky and dangerous places. But guess what? It's God who's keeping you. He's still preserving you. He's not going to let you fall. He's not going to let you drown. He won't let you be destroyed because God is still in control. You got purpose in your life and there is the possibility within you. Somebody say yeah and give God some praise. Possibility. Possibility. And so we see here where and I know it took a long time to get it. We see here where Moses is deposited in some risky places because of the greater plan that God has for him in some risky places. But guess what? We see where Moses was not withdrawn on his own. Moses had some help. To be withdrawn from the circumstance and the situation he was in because God planted some people and God put some people in his life to get him to where he was 
to go. And don't you forget that wherever you are in your life, you didn't get there by yourself. You had some help along the way. I know, I know, I know you had some difficult times. I know you felt like giving up and throwing in the white tower of surrender. But if it had not been for God and God putting some people in your life, you would not be where you are. But thanks be to God for his grace and his mercy. Somebody say yeah and tell the Lord thank you because he put some people in your life to get to where you are right now. It was because of God's grace that you were withdrawn from your situation. Because of God's love, you were withdrawn from the contradictory moments in your life. God picked you up, turned you around, set your feet on higher ground. Somebody say, yeah, and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, because I didn't make it on my own. It comes on a hill called Calvary. That was an old rugged cross that Jesus went to. They stretched him wide and they hung him high. He died. I said he died. Didn't he die? But early, I said early, one Sunday morning, he got up from the grave with all power in his hand and because he lived you can live also because he lived you can live in your possibility because he lived you have a plan to live out that god set for your life say yeah say yeah have you tried him have you tried him give him glory Thank you, Lord. Thank God. Thank God for those who participated in the possibility of my life. Thank God because if it were not for so many people, you would not be where you are. And we thank God for all the seniors and all those who have helped us along the way to participate in withdrawing us from those risky conditions because there's value in us, value in you. You have value. Your life has value. Somebody thought enough of you. Somebody thought enough of me to invest in my, in your life. To bring us out in order for us to move in the place that God 